Tonight's topic is about skiing in the San Juan Mountains. The Durango and Silverton Narrow Gauge Railroad was kind enough to sponsor tonight's event. Uh, we appreciate the train for the sponsorship. This event really isn't possible uh, ongoing without those local sponsors. Kim Dalen started working at Purgatory 40 years ago and joined Ski Patrol about 38 years ago. She was one of the first women hired for Ski Patrol and worked for five to six years as the only woman on Ski Patrol. She'll tell you how attitudes have changed toward women in what was traditionally considered a man's job and maybe offer some words for, of wisdom for how to stay safe in the San Juan Mountains. And she might mention uh, her eight knee surgeries and four shoulder surgeries. <laughs> she might. So I started in Purgatory in 1978. I was hired in the rental shop by Cliff Farfel, better known as Angel. Um, and I worked with Lucy Olson, who's right here. And it was a great experience, and I loved it. But it didn't take me very long in there to look outside and see what these guys were doing. And I thought, you know, they get to be outside skiing. Why I'm in here charging people and fitting boots. And that's what I want to be doing. So the next year, I went over to the rental shop. And I, or from the rental shop, I walked across the way, which was right behind where the rental shop was, was, where the old patrol room was, and I talked to them in there and asked them what I needed to do to get on patrol. And who I talked to was um, Jeff Olmstead, we known as Dr. O, and he was running a training program that year. And so I signed up, and they had us do a ski test, and they eliminated all the people who didn't ski well enough, and then I spent the rest of the season training on toboggans and sweep and lift a vac and all the other things so that I could be qualified to be just like these guys. Oh, wait, maybe those aren't the guys I want to be like. <laughs> so I left for Sweden um, that summer, and I didn't get back until early winter. And by the time I got back, they had already hired, and they hired two women who had come down from Copper, Barb Wolf and Danusha Lorenz. And I was pretty disappointed that there was not a place for me. But this was the 1980-81 season. And if that looks any s familiar to you from this year, it was pretty similar, except that they had no snowmaking. So by the end of January, um, it was looking like closing was imminent. So a lot of people took off from Mexico or found other jobs. And then in February, they got back-to-back -back storms, and the area stayed open, and patrol was short. So that's how I got in. And while we had snow, it was going just like now, it was going really quickly in March. And so the first part of my job there was spreading straw on mud <laughs> and getting pieces of plastic and taking them up in the trees because there wasn't enough snow along the edges of the trail and shoveling snow on the plastic so that it would fall down on the trails and then packing it in just so we could get people down the mountain. And when I had trained for patrol, they had taken me down Lower Hades and Styx and Upper Pando and all the hardest, bumpiest runs they could find. And in reality, which I know from today, most of the accidents occur on beginner or intermediate slopes. And in a year like this, you're trying to keep your speed up to go over transitions and traverses, and then you've got to deal with straw and mud and really gummy snow. And half the time I had to take my skis off and just pull um, like an ox to get the sleds over where we were going. And I remember thinking, this is not quite the glamorous job that I thought it was going to be. But I still loved it. I really loved being outside. Um, I loved working hard, and I loved the people I was working with. This is an out of chronological order, but I showed this because this is, Dee Dee started, I think, 15 years after I did, and that's her on the tail rope. And for those 15 years, there were a few women in and out, but it was mostly um, just me. And then Dee Dee came, and she was the first of the new generation of women that stuck, and we've had good momentum since then. But um, this, is, this is thanks to Dr. O and to Hambone and to Denier and to all the people who spent time training me that we won the state toboggan race that year. This is the very young group that I worked with. And one of the things I think about is that we were all young then. I mean, there was probably a 10-year age difference between the oldest and the youngest. And now when I work, there's a, I think there's almost a 50-year age difference. And so 
You know, we were a really young crew, and um, political, the term politically correct had not been coined yet. It had many years to come. And so this was a very um, irreverent group, and nothing was sacred and nothing was censored. And I see a few people here that I think I'm wondering if they came to wonder if I was going to have my Me Too moment while I'm here. And you can relax. <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> um, and I do feel like the line got pushed, but it never got crossed. <laughs> So, and, and the guys, I got a lot of ribbing and a lot of teasing, probably more than most people got, um, but I also got a lot of help. Um, I remember an incident with Mike Stingle when he and I had gone to a wreck and I was hauling the sled and we got there and there was about, you know, a large guy who's maybe 250 pounds and he took a look at me and said, I'm not going with her, you can take me down. And Mike said, she's the one hauling the sled, you can go with her or you can figure out a way to get yourself down. And I really appreciated the support that I got from all of these guys. And I want to mention now that I turned and looked at Dolph is that the core group of this original patrol group um, was his skiers. I mean, that's where they all came from. So it was a hard group to keep up with. And I felt like as a woman, I couldn't mess up because it was not only a reflection on me personally, but as either the only or one of few there, it reflected on women in general. So I didn't ask for help. I did things that probably were a little, would have been nice to have a big guy helping me do, but we got through it. This is one of our softball games. We always had ski softball games. Um, we worked hard, but we played hard too. This is a schedule that I found that Chuck Ogula wrote, and that would be 33 years ago on Monday. Um, and you can, if you can read that, you can see that this is not a schedule that we would be able to post in these days, but it's pretty appropriate for what's going on up there this week. And this is a picture of Robert McDaniel and Bob Reidiger, also on spring break, where we literally stacked them up like cordwood sometimes. We had a lot coming down. And this is a picture of Dirty and Ethan, and I put this in there because Dirty was the first patrol parent and a single parent at that. And he used to bring Ethan up, and the rest of us were like aunts and uncles to him. We took him out skiing, and I felt like we kind of helped raise him, and he turned into a fabulous person and a fabulous skier, and I think it also made Dirty a little more sensitive to um, the issues of women who were up there. So when I got pregnant, um, in 1989-90 season, um, my first son was born in June, so I was seven months pregnant at the end of the season. Um, I buckled my own boots. That was the hardest task to do pregnant, I'm telling you. And the other hard thing was carrying up sleds um, with a pregnant belly, but I made it through the year. Um, and then next year, I was lucky enough that Susan James was running the teddy bear camp, and they weren't allowing employees, kids there, but she gave me an under-the-table deal and let me bring him in early and at a better price, and it was the only way I was able to keep working. Uh, by the time my second son was born, that had changed, and I was lucky enough to be working at Mercy, and they had a childcare that would let me bring them in at seven and pick them up at six, which was hard to do. I just point that out because it's hard being a woman in this profession. Um, when I came back from um, having Hawk and my youngest, that was when Dee Dee was there. And I don't know why it is, but she fit right in. She was a hard worker. And from then on, we kept picking up more and more women, and we got some momentum. Oh, I stuck this in there. I'm going to show you. When my second son was born, I had to um, pump um, breast milk. And we sat duty in the top of T1. And the only place for any privacy was in the basement, which is what we called the um, Haunta Palace, because it was so full of animal droppings in there. And so the fact that neither one of my son or I ever got sick is kind of amazing. This is one of our parties. This was at the old Far Courts. A lot of you guys probably recognize that. And that was me and Dee Dee and Cliff up front. And a lot of other people you'll recognize in there. And that was. Um, that was a start of kind of families and more women. This is a, a picture, a team picture, and you can see there's a bunch of kids in there and more women. This I'm going to stick up there too. I don't know if you guys can read it. This is a Zeke the Geek comic strip. Um, Chris Zeller worked for us for a lot of years. He was foreman for a lot of them, and he published a very irreverent comic that was underground for patrol only that made fun of all the shenanigans that went on up at the ski area. And this was for my birthday. If you can read any of it, it's again a lot of kind of things that would not be very appropriate right now. But the fact that they thought it would be such a joke that you could ever have an all-woman patrol. 
and I will tell you now that I would never want an all-woman patrol, but I would never want an all-men's patrol anymore either. It's been a nice mix, and I feel like we work well together. Um, we have days now that we have enough women that we have, this was an all women on the backside, and we bring chocolate and scented candles and cheese and crackers and tutus, and we have a great day working together. And this is a picture of another group of us in the locker room. And then this is a recent team photo from a couple years ago, and you can see there's a lot of women and there's a number of kids in there too, and this is kind of the next generation of kids after our kids in there. And if people would ask me why I have made it 38 years in this profession, um, this group of people and all the people that I've worked with over the years is, is a big part of it. Um, I still love taking care of injured skiers and being able to help. And the view from my office can't be beat.